Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're going to be drinking Chivas Regal and their 12-year-old scotch. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit of, well, I guess a lot about this? Yeah, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a long history. Aren't you excited? I know I am. It took me two hours to research this crap. Look at this. Chivas Regal. This is a donation from our buddy Alan Lewis. Thank you very much, Alan. Really appreciate this donation. And it comes with this cool pour. He gave it to me like, I don't know, five or six years ago. And it comes with this cool pour. I mean, this thing is cool. Look at this shit. Good thing this is closed. We dumped it all of us. Almost dropped it earlier, so that would have been awesome. Anyway, so I'm going to pour some and let it sit while uh, I read this amazing long-ass history that I know you all love so much. But like, like this pour, not cool. I don't even... Wow, that's way too much. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back in the bottle because that's way too much. <laughs> That pretty calm back in there. Now it's better. <laughs> so you know, there you go. High quality stuff right there. You get. All right. Anyway, this is Chivas Regal, the twelve year. So we've somehow never talked about Chivas, but yeah, this is this is them. So it started by James and John Chivas. They grew up in a small farm in Scotland and decided that that wasn't really the life for them. So when they were twenty two and twenty six, they left from home on foot, walked for three days, walked to Aberdeen. So that's a hell of a walk back then. I don't want to walk for three days anywhere. So, but good for them. Uh, they start. So then at that point in time, <clears throat> James are working at an emporium that carried like high-end luxury goods and groceries and all sorts of fun stuff. Eventually his brother John joined him. And from there, they actually gained a royal warrant in 1843 from the queen. And with the official groceries to the Duchess of Kent, which was the uh, mother of Queen Victoria at the time. So it's kind of cool. So they apparently had all sorts of royal warrants, including the grocery store. So cool. They said they made a lot of high-end luxury whiskeys. Um, one of their first things they ever made was the Glen D whiskey, which is a mal blended malt because their customers were asking for better blends. So like, okay, so they made that. And a couple others. Um, it looks like they eventually were the, they were the official whiskier to the Belmoral Estate, which is the countryside summer home of the Queen. So pretty cool. Mm -hmm. This is a fancy dancy whiskey, you know, for oh, fancy awesome people. <laughs> so, exactly. So they apparently really carried to the high end. In fact, it became the world's first luxury whiskey back in 1909 started the 25 year so that's pretty cool so eventually all the shivish only died off and their uh their head blender and with the right hand man to their son took over they said one of the rulings of the board was you can buy the bunk company but you have to call it shivish brothers forever okay so that's why i still ship us so which is pretty cool so anyways they were taken over in uh, 1949 by seagram's but they were not allowed to be sold in the middle east because it was owned by a jew so what a bunch of dirty bastards, you know, typical Middle East, but that's the way it generally goes with them. Uh, in 1950, they bought out the Milton Distillery, which, of course, is Struth Isla, which uh, is the base blend of this, which was started in 1786. But we'll give you history when we go over Struth Isla at some point in time. Uh, bought by Pernod Ricard in 2001. Yeah, the big deal is this is the energy. So this is the 12. This is 40 percent. This was introduced in 1939 and replaced the 25 year because the enemy stocks are basically after left for World War One, World War Two. There just wasn't any old whiskey anymore. It just doesn't exist. And they were held, held houses, you know, hold on to whiskey for that long by their owners at the time. And so what goes into this blend of, is Struth Isla, of course, of the base, but also is Longmorn, the Glenlivet, Altavane, Milton Duff, and Brazil Glenlivet, along the Struck Clyde and some other ones. But those are the main ones that are in there. So quick question, quick question. Are you telling me that the original blend was typically 25 years and older? Yes. Jeez. That wow. was the original blend, yeah. And so when they bought your stuff. Yeah, so this is what they re yeah reintroduced it in 1939. But yeah, in 1909 they started a 25 year. That was their that was the only thing they exported in the United States was a 25 year luxury world's very first luxury premium brand. That's pretty well, amazing. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, and, and at the time that was the basically the oldest blend on the market, our oldest blend on the market as well. It was nothing else that old. So yeah, they still cool. spent some uh, serious bucks making this stuff. So, needless to say, I've never had 25. They do still make the 25. They reintroduced it a few years ago. So, someday we'll get one, but I don't have one now. So, maybe someday. So, this is a blended whiskey? Yeah, this is a blended whiskey. But, mo like I said, most of the, the grain is from Lowlands of Strathclyde. And the rest of it's pretty much is all malts from the Highlands and some Space Side. So, okay. But yeah, right. it's fun stuff. Let's see what we think. It smells fruity and delicious. It does smell fruity. Also, Fruit and, and honey, honey is the first thing that yeah. kind of is popping out of yeah. my head. I get a little bit of citrus, like mm -hmm. orange peel. Uh huh. 
Yeah, lots of brown sugar, vanilla, butterscotch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting cool. more like getting into more like champagne territories where I want to say like peaches and, and apricots yeah. and tree fruit. Yeah, yeah tree little fruits. blackberries in there too. Some lime. Yeah. I don't know, obviously, the malt to grain ratio. The malt seems to be fairly high in this. At, at least on the nose, it is. At least the nose. Yeah, on the nose. I don't get very much of the grain forward. It starts to like good distillery, so, you know, it could be. This is uh, all the way down to the floor, though. We're talking 40%, right? Yeah, they did take it down to 40%, which blows, but it is what it is. So, originally, when this came out, this was 86 and that was one of the big things in the U.S. It was an 86 proof. But, yeah, unfortunately, surprise, they're taking everything on the 40, which sucks. I get a little bit of but. strawberry in there. No. Like fresh okay. strawberry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. And even, like, uh, that green top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. It smells delicious. It really does. Yeah. All right. Let's see. It's almost got a, like a sangria feel to it. It really does. You know, that's a really good definition. Sangria, I'd say that's yeah. pretty damn spot on. Yeah. 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 A lot of the that citrus and that then fruity. the effervescence of like yeah. the, mm -hmm. the wine or champagne, whatever goes into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't make sangria. No. So Tastes good. I tasted it, <laughs> um, but I make that shit. Um, <laughs> but. I do know there's a lot of fruits that go into it, uh -huh. but true, yeah. yeah, it's got a lot of black pepper and toffee and cinnamon and some Honey. brown sugar. Little, uh, Not as much vanilla on the palate as there is on the nose. No, yeah, there's almost really no vanilla at all. It's like maybe a drop. It's really more yeah. than, than anything. And it's it's more along the lines to me of like a vanilla bean than mm -hmm. just the other side of vanilla, regular yeah. vanilla. I, to me, the, the the wateriness kind of is what is dominating everything. I'm getting yeah. a lot of these flavors, but it's just so muted. It's watered down. Uh, yeah. It, it, granted, it feels like this is just like swinging for home plate, right? Oh, totally. Unheated scotch, uh, you know, not expensive. But yeah, it's it's still, one seven five, they're fifty. You can get a seven fifty for like thirty bucks. They're not. It's not expensive yeah. for an age dated. You know, granted, yeah. it's blended. But, been around forever. I mean, you know what you're going to get when you buy it. I mean, it's good. And I know a lot of people drink it with like club soda. It's a pretty common one to be mixed with. I don't um, get a lot of that grain forward metallic that you normally get. No, which I appreciate that. greatly. I, yes. I was just about to say the same thing. It does feel like it is more malt heavy on um, the blend. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it is or not. I'm not, you know, responsible for blending, but it feels like on the palate that it is more malt heavy, which we were saying on the nose as well. Right, right. Yeah. Plus, we like most of these these malts that go in there a lot, so it doesn't really surprise me that we like this. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty tasty. I mean, mm -hmm. my my best that's my best definition of this would be white sangria, and yeah. you know, take agree. from that what you will. You got all the fruit and the you know effervescence, and so we're actually saying white sangria. Well, yeah. Okay, Pinot Grigio and red and, sangria yeah. would be a lot richer and yeah. deeper yeah. and. Mm -hmm berry forward as opposed to the, the tree fruit forward this probably would be delicious making sangria with it though probably would mixing yeah. a little bit of alcohol there but a really jacked up version of sangria that's really high alcohol <laughs> so. here's the uh whiskey crusaders version of sangria mm -hmm. okay <laughs> don't don't kill yourself <laughs> drink responsibly yeah for real and safely uh, yeah. also sure. want to thank uh, our, our buddy Vinny his wife Christy made this awesome shirt thank you very much appreciate it it looks cool heck yeah yeah so enjoy this uh, hearing about this Vinny on your mailman route I'm sure it'll be a great time alrighty so once again thanks Alan for uh, this donation really appreciate it uh, quite a tasty whiskey you didn't like it but we sure do so good for us yeah that's right yeah this yeah. bottle from uh, for what it is for what it for is, what it is. For a $30, it's old. <laughs> $30, age stated. I'm a happy guy for what for what that is. Uh, Absolutely. But, you know, but is it extraordinary? No, but it's good. It's yeah, good. I mean, you know, the bottle, like it says, from 2009, so it's been sitting around for a while. Fair Stick enough. it as your daily drinker and be happy with it. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's what it's good for. It's perfect. Yeah. 
Heard that. Heard that. All right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. And be sure to check us out on Monday Night Live. Till next time. Keep on crusading for better whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. Today we're going to be drinking. Mm, today we're drinking Chivas. Chivas Regal. Yeah, Chivas Regal. Twelve year. <laughs>